G'day and welcome to this edition of Radio Waves. I'm Glenn, VK2HTV, and today we're going to be looking at FT8. Do I need it? Is it for me? Well, stick around and you can find out. Most of the uh, newer radios do have a USB. In the case of the 7300, which I'm using, has both actually a remote control for cat control and a USB, which has the cat control and also the uh, USB audio has a sound card inside. So you're actually getting the uh, transmit and receive via the sound card in the radio, which makes a hell of a lot of difference and saves a lot of time and effort setting up. So you do need a radio and some kind of interface. Some of them are built in, like I just said, with the F, uh, the uh, IC7300. And then you're going to need some pieces of software. Some people have done it on a laptop, but you can do it on a Mac, you can do it on a PC, and you can do it on a Raspberry Pi. I've done it on all three. Um, and it depends on how good you are at tuning your sound card it all comes down to your sound card really the thing i found with windows is that you have to turn off some of the enhancements in windows and one of the problems i found with the raspberry pi is that the sound settings would uh, drop off from time to time so you'd have to go and reset them so that was a bit of a problem but i found uh, the uh, the macintosh is pretty good uh, because their their uh, system is, is is fantastic in terms of its audio um, but I just found that the PC version, uh, and I'm not a huge fan of PCs, but I found the PC version actually performs really well once you actually turn off some of those enhancements. Now, there's plenty of other videos that will talk about the setup of uh, WSJTX, which is the program that I'm using, and how you can integrate that with your radio. Go and search out some of those. Do a search for setting up your particular radio and FT8 or WSJTX. Now, the first thing you need to do is download a copy of WSJTX. Uh, I've already got a copy there running in the background, but uh, just literally um, do a Google search or your favourite search engine, and you'll get physics.princeton.edu. Now, once you go there, you'll see the downloads for the current package, uh, either in Winic Windows, Linux, or Macintosh, Download your favourite version. Uh, as I say, go through the setup through the radio. So I'm going to show you the use part of using FT8. Now, this is what my screen looks like once I'm set up and go through the steps of setting yours up and the configuration. One of the things you do need to tick is the mode. You'll see there's all the other digital modes there that are current flavors but the ft8 is the one we're interested in it says down the on the drop up ft8 but it also says ft8 down the bottom in pink now you have to go through uh your settings and set up your call sign and your grid square you have to look up your grid square there's a whole lot of settings here that is particular to your the way you want it to look uh reporting is one of the things that uh is 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 handy to do to be able to integrate this with your logbook. I'm integrating this with QRZ. So once I actually uh, get a a conversation, then I put it over to QRZ and it logs it automatically. Uh, the bottom one here, you see, you see the reporting there: one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one two two three seven. That's the standard one to allow different reporting going on. The bottom one there is actually a uh, a, a sprint contest, you could say, uh, which we do every Thursday, and that just enables uh, what's called FT8 off, which is a little weekly sprint to log some uh, contacts. Um, down here in VK2, we don't get a lot of uh, contacts at the time when they do that on a Thursday evening US time, but uh, it's uh, Friday morning, our, our time. So the bands are higher, are, uh, are better, but there's not a lot of people on there. At the moment, we're on 15 metres. Uh, so you can see I've just done the drop down there. 
on the left hand side you could see actually the band activity and on the right hand side that relates to my receive frequency uh, I'll go down here and you'll see the different bands if I switch around you'll see that the radio you might be able to hear it clicking radio does actually switch around once I click onto those bands so I've only got my antenna tuned for 40 meters 20 meters and 15 and 10 so they're the only ones that I'm uh, currently interested in now an interesting part to connect with that is the grid tracker software and if you look over to the far right hand side you'll see that there's little bars there and it's showing the connection between WSJTX and Grid Tracker is showing that we're on the 15 meter band because you see the circle of the 15 meter and it's also showing activity. So this is where the crossover happens between you just liking amateur radio for voice and seeing actually what's what the bands are doing at the moment. So even if you you just use this to see what bands are open, this is a perfect way before you start going and doing some voice to actually see what bands are alive at the moment. So at the moment I can tell straight away from looking at this that the 15 metre and the 20 metre bands are active. So the little bar graph there does show the amount of activity. And then uh, the map of that uh, does show the stations that are active around the world. It's also got the grey line, which is at the moment right over the middle of the Pacific. Down the bottom... Uh, is called the call roster. Now that's just a reflection of what's on the band activity and showing in a little bit more of a graphical context of who's calling, where they're from, and that they're calling CQ. So you get the little green CQDX or CQ there. So at the moment we've got two stations there, Japan and China calling CQ. So you can see that also in the band activity, uh, which is currently coloured in orange there but if I was to click on this BH which is a Chinese station straight away it's got the information this is grid tracker getting the information from QRZ it's showing the uh, call sign uh, his address his email a little picture and a, a very minor brief history from China Shanghai China so we know exactly where that's coming from that's coming off the grid tracker software it's not coming off the WSJTX software so that's where I like the two sides of having FT8 running at the same time grid tracker is a free download so is WSJTX but the good thing about the grid tracker is it's a bit of a companion for uh, the FT8 side of things so at the moment we're just putting out the the contact there so we're we're telling uh, Bravo Hotel for Bravo November Quebec that we're our call sign we're VH, VK2 HTV and we're in QF56 so that tells us our location if he responds you'll see it tick over in red and he will respond with what he is seeing my signal strength at at the moment, I'm going to report if he comes back to minus 15 dB and we'll see how this plays out. Uh, he might be in another conversation that we can't see from where I am. He might be having a conversation uh, further north of where he is. But uh, as we saw in that last over, so each over is 15 seconds and you probably see the little, right in the middle of the screen, there's the bar graph there which is counting up to 15 so every 15 seconds is either in odd mode or even mode and there we go we've got the first part of the conversation he's seeing us at minus 25 which isn't great but he's still seeing us and I've replied instantly uh, this is all automatic it, and it, it's it's counting down in the next transmission there so I'm replying a reception of minus 19 Let's see if he replies on the next over in the 15 second window. And he will probably come straight back with either a 73 or an RR73. Um, 
depending on how quickly he wants to continue the conversation. And you also notice down in the grid tracker, there's highlighted the call sign there that I'm calling. It's got my call sign highlighted. And it's at the top there of that uh, call roster. So he hasn't heard me again. Um, But that's okay. I'll keep putting it out there. Each time you do that 15-second transmit, the other half of the 15 seconds is received. And currently I'm on odd. If you can see, there's a tick mark there for TX even first or TX odd. And I'm in the odd section now because I've unchecked that. So now they're straight away, he's come back with 73s. I'm transmitting the 73 back to him. And in the top left-hand corner now you can see this is uh, to click OK to confirm the QSO. So it's automatically population populated the call sign, the start, the end, the mode, the band, the signal sent and the signal received and the grid he's at, my transmit power, and you can retain those, which is handy for doing uh, contests, uh, especially the power. Sometimes they want to know the power, whether you're low power or what type of power you've been putting out. So I'm going to hit OK on that, and now that will be logged straight into QRZ. PSK Reporter actually shows you where you're getting out. Uh, similar to the grid tracker one, but this one's a little bit more detailed. So you can see that uh, the colours there represented by the brown with the white lettering shows how long ago you were seen, what power you were seen and where you were seen. So there again is the grey line and it's pretty much just to the uh, right of Australia there. And we're getting out pretty much directly north to Japan, a little bit in Russia and that's probably some of the uh, uh, very Eastern Europe stations that we were getting out before. So if you do a few transmits, you will actually see this map populate on whatever band you're on. If we were on 40 metres, it would be blue. Uh, if we're, we're currently on 15 metres, it's, it's, uh, it's brown. Uh, and I think you can actually go and change that. So what you do is you put your call sign in the box there and then that will actually show you uh, your call sign heard in stations that are participating in the PSK reporter reception results. So this is just a handy tool to actually see where you're getting out before you even have a conversation, whether it be an FT8 conversation or a voice conversation. I'll put a link in the description to both Grid Tracker and WSJTX uh, and also PSK Reporter. And the most important thing is experiment, have fun. That's what amateur radio is all about in 73s.